Alright guys, so we got um, a couple updates to cover uh, first. So as you can see over here, there is a lot more dense um, actual biome compared to the biome over here. Uh, the I believe this biome over here is the one that is the forest. As you can see, there's a lot more... Um, oh, actually, maybe this is the larger tree. Yeah, these are the larger trees. So uh, these are the ones that are the largest ones. They have the little uh, house thing that you can build in in these uh, little places here. And they're all set up for rotation and stuff now. So they all generate um, according to the wood uh, woodlands or wood woods uh, biome. So that's a thing now. And uh, if we go ahead and travel a little bit further on, we can actually find um, some other things. So there are some small trees in this mix. Uh, not a whole lot. I didn't want a whole bunch, but you can see that it's quite dense. Uh, and that's the kind of look that I was going for when I was designing the thing. I wanted it to be a little bit more denser than the forest. So the forest has smaller trees, a couple medium trees, but no large trees. Now, uh, that was intended as well. As you can kind of see, it gets dense around more flat areas rather than the hillsides. Uh, that is down to the script for actually generating. So... Now what I wanted to do was actually get into the working of a sapling for the uh, pair of trees, which will allow us to randomly grow a tree based on a block. So I already have scripts set up that we can use. Uh, I just need to tweak a few things to um, allow us to use offset, but we needed to create a texture first for the tree. So started with uh, just grabbing something from the palette quickly and I started working with the actual like pixels and stuff to kind of give us a uh, a unique texture for the tree itself. I wanted it to kind of be unique for the mod and kind of be identifiable quickly. So I was thinking about adding a little leaf part down here but didn't really know if I wanted to do that because the the bottom of the tree would have needed to be still done. So I grabbed the colors over here for the brown and I just started filling in the area where I would think that uh, the, the sapling needed to go and I needed to figure out um, the branch parts and how that should be all set up so I needed to kind of kind of just outline certain parts just where it might go through the, the leaves and stuff like that so I didn't want to fully like uh, just draw it on to the thing generally leaves when you look at the tree and stuff like that you don't actually see um, it totally outlined right so you will see parts of the branches and stuff but not the entire thing uh, so I'm trying to mimic that part with the pixels and stuff up there and then I wanted to darken uh, some of the parts were under the leaves and stuff like that where it would be darker uh, with the shading and stuff like that so basically like if there is coverage over the tree then obviously it's going to be darker so in certain parts you might notice that there is lighter part now I'm working on the shading for the actual um the leaves themselves and i'll probably pass over with another uh shade for a darker green just so we have a little bit variety of color to work with so i wanted to kind of blend it in a little bit and overall this looked really good i just needed to blend a little bit more of that um medium green in just so it was give it gives it some balance and i was pretty happy with the design but i needed to adjust the position of the actual log so it um like the stump so it actually is met in the middle so i needed to kind of design the um stump a little bit more differently so it would work so i needed to do that and then rework the shading and stuff like that because that wasn't going to work the way that I had it. So I needed to figure out um, exactly what I was going to do. So once I was happy with the textures and stuff like that, I could import the texture from our projects, um, basically our the assets that I've created. And then I could finally start working on the block itself. So uh, once I've done that, I needed to create um, a folder for the sapling. And then I needed to create the block itself. 
So I'm using a block. I'm not using a crop or a plant or anything like that. Reason being, it's just it has more properties and I have more support for, you know, making something that I might end up needing like light value or other things. And blocks have pretty much all the same settings as plants. So there isn't really any pro or con of using either or. It's just or the other one because it's uh, blocks have pretty much everything that you need anyways. So I just needed to make sure that the properties were set up for the material and the uh, hardness and resistance was zero. The sound and basically all the other settings. Also walking through the block was really important. Um, I also set the tick rate to one but I ended up going with a random tick update instead. And I needed to set the AI pathfinding and the piston properties as well as the map color on this page. Uh, I also needed a placement condition for when we place the block on a other block. So I wanted to make sure that this block was going to be dirt, uh, as many other saplings use the same tag to um, basically allow the crops or the, the saplings to be placed on. So things like grass, um, our grass, pretty much anything that is a surface layer will be under that particular tag. So um, once we've done that, I just adjusted some of the settings and created an update tick as we're going to need that as well. And once we've done that, I went back here and just set the update tick to random. And then we could start working on getting the actual workspace from my projects workspace. Um, GitHub repository. So I found, I just searched sapling and then it was the top one and then I downloaded the latest version of that particular one. So there was a whole bunch of changes there for that particular version. And I remember working on this not too long ago, so it should be um, compatible with the latest version that we have. I just needed to look at the procedures and figure out what we needed to use. So we have a whole bunch of different procedures here. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the placement condition because we're going to need to update this particular one here. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. And that gives us uh, some additional uh, properties for if there's water next to the block, uh, it will break. So basically if there is not water at that location, then like on the sides of the block, then what's going to happen is it's going to be able to be placed there. Uh, if there is water, then it's going to break. So that will allow for flowing water and other things like that to basically determine the outcome of if the block can be placed or not. And then we're also testing for that dirt tag that we had before as well underneath the block. So I just updated the, um, the, the tags to support our tag uh, system for our namespace and then I needed to go ahead and set up the bone meal settings. So once I've done that I needed to create the condition for bone mealing and basically I needed to import this so if the light level um, I think this has to do with the oh a random chance that's right so it's basically going to happen randomly and then we have the other condition which contain contains our um, basically our script for the different variants that we'll end up creating. So we're going to need one for each uh, stage of our, our different uh, model of our trees. So we're going to need one for all the different variants, the three variants for small trees, three variants for the medium trees, and three variants for the large trees because we have all th we have three, three stages, three heights for those. So we're going to need to create a variant for each one of those. Actually, like total of nine procedures for all the variants. But luckily in the procedure itself, uh, what we are able to do is we're able to automatically calculate all the rotations and stuff just by updating some uh, settings. So I was just adjusting the script for that. I needed to figure out what I needed to do next. So I needed to create a uh, update tick procedure and basically what we're doing in this procedure is we're going to make sure that the light level and everything is set up. Uh, this is for the auto growth so I needed to just import that and then we'll, we would end up going back to that later. Uh, the next thing that I needed to do was actually set up the um, script for the I believe it's the um, 
uh, variation. So uh, we needed to create the variation for that particular tree. Now, this was just a beta one that I was testing. I needed to check all the settings and stuff like that. I ended up uh, renaming it and deleting this additional one and um, using something else. So I needed to update the tag, add the tag to the list. So I needed to make sure that this tag was imported properly. So I needed to clean this up a little bit and then we could use the our uh, a mod namespace so it was easy to update all the tags and stuff in the script. Um, one of the other things that I noticed was that it didn't have um, Y offset support. So I needed to add that to the actual thing later on um, by updating all the variables on the thing. And I did update this workspace for the um, the actual uh, sapling tutorial. So it does support the offset now for both the double tree, double saplings and the single sapling uh, variant uh, script now. So I was just going through the settings. I needed to actually go in game and um, test to see what the sizes were and make sure that they were all set up. So the sizes have to be exactly the same as the structure or it won't work uh, per se. So just need to make sure that that was all set up for those parts. And then I noticed that the Y offset wasn't even set up. So I needed to double check to make sure everything was working, would work with our structure or would be on top of the, the entire terrain, which the roots would be exposed and it wouldn't look that good. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to make sure that we could have the offset and that's where I just quickly implemented this um, mechanic so I needed to delete that and then go ahead and try again so structure offset and I ended up creating a block state I didn't realize that <laughs> and then I needed to tweak some of the code and stuff like that so I could work on that but I didn't realize that I was actually uh, set that block state so I needed to figure out where I needed to put the script for the offset and I was just looking at the code that I created a while back I'm like okay uh, all this is good so I just needed to basically add a script here and just make sure that the value was easy to to basically edit up here so and that's when I realized that the block state wasn't properly set in so I needed to create that and then update all the variables and stuff like that so add some notes and other things to the uh, list but um, yeah so I wanted to create something that would allow me to automatically uh, set a negative or positive for the main variable and then combine that so I could basically automatically update the entire thing so this is basically what I'm doing right here I'm just replacing those main variable or the y offset or the y position with the offset so we could um, automatically um, subtract the amount of uh, distance downwards so the structure wasn't on the surface but actually in the ground. Uh, the position for testing should still be the same uh, height and everything as the actual tree but um, it'll just allow for a little bit more flexibility when actually placing the trees and stuff. All right so the next thing I needed to do was make sure that tag was set up and um, I needed to make sure that the air was selected and any of the blocks that I want to basically allow for replacement of the structure. So any blocks that aren't in this tag will be seen as basically non um, or blocks that can't be um, within a certain area of the test when the structure is about to be placed. So I basically added all our blocks that we would find in that particular biome. I might add other blocks later on, but um, I needed to make sure that this was all set up. So these are all the blocks. And as you can see, error is actually working uh, because the error is not in the name at the moment. Um, there's been some problems with the tags uh, for air itself, but uh, air, water, any material block that you name that has the same name, it's just been pretty nasty bug to have to deal with. It took me a while to figure out what was going on, but um, all right. So the next thing I need to do is uh, basically duplicate that procedure that we had and then update all the um, structure 
files as well as get the sizes and all that other stuff. So I need to get the sizes and update the variables. So I ended up doing that for all the different variants. And then I moved on to actually going ahead and working on getting the variant script set up. So we have that script there and then we need to get this script for our variant. So I needed a condition for our um, three different types of variants. And I'm gonna give this an even uh, probability this time. The other one that we have on the outer part will control the variant um, sizes where the inner ones will allow us to change the variant type. So for example, under the small one, which will be the one with a higher prior probability from um, a value of one to four, it will allow us to generate a small tree. Medium tree is with the value, this the second one down below. And then the large one will be the large um, trees down below that. So basically we have medium, which I'm just setting up here. And then our large trees would be at the bottom so we can duplicate that one more and make our large trees set up right here. And that will allow us to uh, have all the different variations. I did update all the structure rotations and stuff like we had to um, get the names all set up for the structures. And I'm just using the north direction structure as the baseline. So everything is based on that. All right, so now that I've done that, I needed to uh, create a script for the leaves. I'm just um, getting some script from the base game for the leaves. I'm hoping that this will work. Um, I haven't tried this before, but I'll have to test it in game thoroughly to make sure that our saplings actually drop and stuff um, when there is um, the leaves are broken and stuff like that without silk touch or you know stuff like that so basically i wanted to uh, test if all this is going to work and i'm hoping that this is the this is basically the leaves for the acacia tree right so we'll be able to use the script hopefully to allow us to use a similar mechanics for replacing blocks in or basically making our own leaves now we were not going to actually import this as a direct tag um like you know through m creator what we're going to do is we're going to actually go to the mod workspace folder once i get to the right application and we're going to go to the source folder and then we're going to go into the uh, data folder for the particular thing and then we need our namespace and we're just going to create a um not a folder but a new file and we're going to call it um our same name as our block and then what we're going to do is basically save that and we need to make sure that it's a .json file so we can basically import all this script so i basically just pasted the script from the other file from the acacia leaves and i've been updating the uh, file names that have anything acacia in it so basically this will allow us to um, change everything else. Now all the other settings should be fine the way that they are with the fortune and all that other stuff. I don't think that there would be any particular problem with that per se. Um, some of this might not even be relevant. Uh, we might not even use enchantments in this particular dimension. Uh, we might have our own system for enchantments or something like that, but um, it might be still required to create some stuff. If we decide to go with something that is a little bit different for making the uh, silk touch and stuff, we can always update that particular procedure later on as well. So that gives us a little bit more flexibility for our leaves and stuff like that. And I'm just needed to make sure that the namespace and everything was properly set up for that particular particular file. All right, so let's go into this flat world and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab our newly grabbed sapling and then we're going to use some bone meal on this just to make sure the bone meal mechanic is working. And we can walk through the block, that's perfect. And I needed to get some bone meal so it's not under our mod tab. We need to go here and then look for bone meal. There it is. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to bone meal it a few times and it did grow a small tree this time so we can try again with another tree this one was a large tree well i think that was a medium one possibly and let's try 
try this one and that gave us another small one and this one will give us that one gave us a large one so we got a large tree from that one so as you can see it does work uh, we do get some extra additional stuff with that so we'll try it one more time and I just needed to try uh, one more thing to make sure that the trees automatically grow so I needed to go a little bit further out and I'm going to place down a bunch of saplings just so you guys can see that it does grow and we're going to adjust the random tick speed for this world so we can make sure that the saplings do grow eventually and I'm just going to set the random tick speed to like a thousand and then we can basically see them grow so I'm setting the game rule random tick speed to a thousand and as you can see they do grow eventually so that's perfect over time they will grow and they can populate the world so some final notes is um the blocks that aren't in that particular tag list for the the variation uh, basically anything that's not in that particular tag list will prevent the sapling from growing so basically if there these vines weren't in that particular tag list and it was in the area then it would cause problems with that so anything that we encounter that we need to make sure that it will properly grow we can just place some of these around here and we'll try to use bone meal on it so quickly placing bone meal on the, the structure or the sapling you can see that it's not going to generate we can continue to do this for as long as we want and it's just going to not use any bone meal so if we remove this um, it's going to still be hard because it's in within the range right so as soon as we remove all that wool um, it's going to grow the tree so as you can see that's basically the mechanic for the sapling but outside of that if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out